If you think it's just a truck, you're mistaken. It's the latest autonomous microbiological laboratory, and these fields are deceptively peaceful. And now Saratov epidemiologists have developed this a mobile complex capable of operating anywhere in the world in case of a threat. Actually, this is the reason we're all here today. Oh, thanks. No, it's not a nuclear briefcase, even though I would call it a real bacteriological bomb. Inside, blood samples of sick African athletes are stored in three impermeable packages. He has a fever, bleeding. So, to cut the long story short, it's an unknown disease. But what is this disease? And what's its cause? We're going to find out in this indication laboratory. And there's not just one laboratory, there are five of them. Plus the headquarters module and the entire mobile complex is set in just two hours. And to get here, you need to change your clothes. You can hardly recognize me like this, but it's still me, Alexandra. Hello. This room has the most reliable protection for work with pathogens of the most dangerous infectious diseases, groups one and two of pathogenicity. All we have to do is bring in this infection here through the transmission gateway. That's the suitcase. We open the biocarrier. In general, when you work with real samples, do you get anxious at this moment? Well, a little, of course, yeah. Of course, it's a drill, not a real epidemic. But a bacterium or a virus inside the sample is quite real. Waiting for the green button to light up. Mm -hmm. We open the box and put the container on the tray with a cloth moistened with a disinfectant. What's the threat there? To understand it is the goal of today's exam for the team of experts. That's why everything happens exactly as it would in a real situation. As soon as the sample is moved to the main box, the previous one is disinfected. Next, we must extract the secondary packaging with the samples from the tertiary packaging. This is the most dangerous moment? Yes. If this was happening not in a closed box, but in nature, for example, then there would be an epidemic. Well, of course. The primary container is extracted from the secondary container. So the samples are enclosed not just in one container, two containers. There are three of them. Right. So we have a serum sample. I mean, it's the serum and the patient's blood. Two samples. Then I pass these samples to the next person and they disinfect them. Then a lysis buffer is added to the tubes, a solution that destroys the cell walls and kills them, but it keeps the pathogen's RNA and DNA intact. Only now the test tubes are ready to go further. This way we disinfect the chamber now with ultraviolet light in order not to spread anything contagious around the place. And here's when you realize that all these protection rules actually work and they are absolutely necessary. Although this suit is very hot and I feel really uncomfortable wearing it. I can't imagine how you would work in these conditions. In this section, the protection class is already lower, but the work continues. The nucleic acid amplification solution is added to the infectious sample thereby triggering the polymerase chain reaction, which makes short segments of the agent's RNA or DNA copy themselves and quickly regenerate directly inside the tubes. This will give the researchers more material and therefore more accurate results, although Ekaterina already has a guess. We'll be looking for Ebola RNA. So you suspect that this is Ebola virus because the sample has arrived from Africa. Okay. Next, we start the device. 
and in just two hours, the thermostat detector will give us an answer whether Ekaterina's assumptions were correct or not. Two hours is fast, yes. Before the appearance of the PCR method, the analysis of the pathogen indication took quite a long time, about a few days. A few days? So we've got a person who's ill, but the result will be available only a few days later. That was hard. I agree. In the meantime, Since 2014, a mobile laboratory of Saratov Research Institute works in Gany, and it was these people who prevented the epidemic of the deadly disease Ebola from spreading. They're all certified as rescuers, and these people and vehicles are rescuers as well. But what if today the experts have made a mistake, and the task of the drill isn't to find a virus? Svetlana, hello. Hello. So you continue to work with bacteria, don't you? Yes. So how long have they been here? 18 hours. In case it is not a virus, the parallel samples are grown on nutrient media and, depending on what it's for, bacteria. The colonies on petri dishes grow differently. These bacteria are then studied under a microscope, but it's only the beginning of identification. This polystyrene tablet has different substrates. Carbohydrate, protein nature, amino acids. And we'll determine the ratio of microorganisms to these substrates. And thus identify these microorganisms. Biochemical identification takes from 16 to 28 hours, including the process of incubation. But in the end, with the help of this microbiological analyzer, we can finally figure out what it actually is. We found out that a pathogen of the Salmonella genus is present in these samples here. So Salmonella, it would seem that you have already identified the enemy and you are sure about it. That's the end of your work, right? Did you find out what it was? And what about antibiotic sensitivity? Many modern bacteria are resistant or immune to antibacterial drugs. Therefore, the problem of treating the patient is also solved here by test processing and recording the results. This lifeless circle in the middle of the colony is scientifically a zone of bacteriostasis, which means that it works. We test the microorganisms that we allocate here with more than 40 different antibacterial drugs. I see, to maximize our capabilities and to make the lives of patients easier as a result. Of course, that is our tax. And yet, Salmonella does not explain all these introductory drills. Let us go back to the indication laboratory. We see that when we have two curves on the screen and we see that the first sample contains Ebola virus RNA, the second curve is positive control, confirmation that the reaction has been successful. And yet we know now that you are having a drill now. And no one will ever bring the Ebola virus to this place while the media are here. Of course. So what kind of virus is that really? It's a fragment of the Ebola virus. Wow. Isn't that dangerous? No, it's not dangerous at all. It's already disinfected material. Some will say that it was obvious, but thanks to such drills, epidemiologists are constantly ready to protect all of us from invisible yet very real danger. <laughs>